Here's our next example of how we deal with motion in one dimension, especially free fall with two objects in place. Now on our previous example, we showed you how we had one ball being dropped, the other ball being thrown up, and the question was, if that was done at the same time, when would the two balls meet? For the part B of the problem, when ball two is dropped one second after ball one is thrown up, we couldn't do that previous problem because I had the wrong numbers here and it wouldn't come out very good. So I changed the problem to it starting at a height of 40 meters instead of 20 meters. And now we're going to do part B is the ball being dropped one second later. All right, when will they meet at that time? The approach is still the same. We're still going to say that y1 equals y2 because at that time the heights are the same for both. The equations are still the same, so we have y initial for the first ball plus v initial for the first ball times t plus one half, and I'll write t1 plus one half g t1 squared equals y initial for the second ball plus v initial for the second ball times t2 plus one half g t2 squared. Now notice the difference is that in the previous example, T1 and T2 are equal to each other. It happened at the same time when they were, one was dropped and the other was thrown up. But in this case, there's a one second difference, so T1 is not equal to T2, so we have to take that into account. But we can make things a little bit simpler. Uh, ball 1 starts at zero height, so this goes to zero. Ball 2 is dropped uh, with initial velocity equal to zero, so that goes to zero. Uh, let's see, anything else? I don't think so. I think that's uh, the rest is there. So now let's plug in some numbers. So V initial for the first ball is 25 times T1 minus 4.9 T1 squared equals Y2 initial would be 40 minus 4.9 times T2 squared. Now what is the relationship between T2 and T1? Well T2 is a time for ball 2 and it was dropped one second later. That means T2 is one second less than T1, so we have to write uh, T1 minus 1 quantity squared. So in this case, we can say that T2 is T1 minus 1, one second less than T1. So after when T1 is 1, T2 is 0. So that makes sense. All right. So now that we have T1 the same everywhere, we can go ahead and simplify this equation. So we can write 25 t1 minus 4.9 t1 squared is equal to 40. So now we have minus 4.9 times this quantity squared. That's a binomial squared. So it's t1 squared uh, minus 2 t1 plus 1. Multiplying this through and get rid of brackets, we get 25 t1 minus 4.9 t1 squared equals 40 minus 4.9 t1 squared. That time that gives you plus 9.8 t1 and this time this gives you minus 4.9. Now what's nice about this is that the square terms cancel out. So this cancels out with this one. And so now we only have an equation in the uh, first order. So we have 25 t1 minus 9.5, so we're going to bring that over. So we have 25 t1 minus 9.8 t1. Remember when you cross the equal sign, the sign changes. And here we have 40 minus 4.9. Simplifying that, we have 15.2 t1 is equal to 40 minus 4.9 or 35.1. So t1 is equal to 35.1 divided by 15.2. All right, 35.1 divided by 15.2 equals, and it's 2.31 seconds. So what does that mean? T1 is a time when ball one leaves the ground. So 2.31 seconds after T1 is thrown up, or ball one is thrown up, it means the ball coming down from the height of 40 meters. Another way of looking at it, since two is one second less, 1.31 seconds after this ball is dropped, it will meet up with the ball coming from below. That's when they will pass one another. Right, what is the height at that moment? Well, let's plug in T1 to the equation. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this equation and plug in T1. So we have Y1 equals Y initial 1 plus V initial 1 times T1 minus 4.9 T1 squared. So all we've done is taken that equation and plugged in the values for the first ball 
Notice that the first ball starts at height of zero meters, so that goes to zero. Y1 is what we're looking for, is equal to v initial, in the in, uh, v initial for one, which is 25 meters per second, and the time is 2.31 minus 4.9 times 2.31 squared. All right, let's work that out quickly. So we have uh, square that times 4.9, that's negative, and then plus the quantity 25 times 2.31. Oh, 09, I remember, so that's equal to that. So we have y1 is equal to 31.6 meters above the ground. And that's the height at which the two balls will cross one another. Ball one goes up, ball two comes down. And they'll cross at a height of 31.6 meters. Okay, so again, to summarize, if the time is different for the first ball and the second ball, make sure you indicate that, we're using T1 and T2, get a relationship between the two, then plug in the numbers for T1 and T2 independently, and uh, then you can work out at what time they will cross each other. Once you know the time, then you plug it back in the same equation, either one or the other equation, to find the height after that time. And that's how you find the height at which two balls cross, even if they're not thrown and dropped at the very same time.